All right, so stage one uh, for the septic inspection is obviously locating the tank, and we always want to locate the, the water source, the wellhead. This septic system is pretty much an, an easy gimme because they had it pulled, uh, dug up less than a year ago, so we can see the ground still disturbed. Um, even when the when it's not this freshly disturbed, you can still look for signs where the grass will look a little different. Sometimes you'll see a square outline in the grass that's growing a little differently. Um, or you look for where somewhere it's been disturbed in the last year or two. Also, we go inside the house and we look for where the pipe is coming out of the house. We, we can locate it so we get our trajectory and then we know from the where the pipe is the depth too. Because if the pipe is leaving the house really deep there and it's pitched at a quarter inch a foot, um, it, the tank is going to keep getting lower and lower the further out we are. So then I take a probe, pointed rod, <coughs> where I think about where the tank is and I start working it down into the ground trying to hit the concrete. So there's a miss. We come over here and I have a hit onto the concrete. Over here I have a hit onto the concrete. Pipe's coming from there so this is going to be the inlet. I'm looking for the outlet side and then what I'm doing with that point, that pencil tip, is once I work it down into the concrete, I work it back and forth feeling for it to catch on a seam or a handle because I'm looking for the outlet port and I don't want to have to dig up the whole thing so I want to uh, spend time to find exactly where that is and hopefully only dig once. When you're doing a load test and a uh, sewer scope out into the to test the absorption area the outlet side is what you really need to get to if you can. You don't have to but it's ideal to get to the outlet side. So when I was probing down with the rod, not only am I finding the depth, but by working it back and forth, feeling for a seam, this is what I'm looking for right here. This is a inspection port or an outlet port. Uh, the handle had corroded and rusted completely off, but you can feel that seam if you have a pencil tip probe. So uh, it's hard to see when you're shoveling, but you scrape across, you feel it bump there. And you can see the 90 degree, uh, sometimes they'll be rectangular, sometimes they'll be round, sometimes they'll be this big around, this big around. So you don't know until you clean it out. But now we're going to pop that open and we're going to start the load test. Um, this one's loose, but because it doesn't have a handle, what you do is you take a couple, uh, like a painter's 5-in-1 or some uh, sheetrock mud knives, and you just wedge them down in there and clean it all out and, and pry it up. Alright, so now what we're doing is the load test. So I've got the inspection port open, the levels of the tank were good. So you got your, at your outlet pipe, the level of the waste is right at the bottom of it. That's exactly where it's supposed to be. Uh, we can see that the baffle is intact. So I measured the amount of water out of the garden hose. Our gallons per minute is four gallons per minute. So I want to put about 100 gallons into this tank all at once and see how that handles it. We're going to put 120 in, so that's 30 minutes of just running it straight into the tank. That's more than the tank should ever have to handle normally coming from the house, unless you're having a huge party. Um, so if the absorption area can handle this, then it can handle nor normal daily use. And if there's any sort of problem in the absorption area that may take years to manifest themselves, this can make it rear its head right now while we're looking at it. So if you come looking here, this is one type of baffle. This is a concrete baffle that was poured with the tank as part of it. Um, you have to watch because eventually they do erode and corrode, especially if there's a water treatment system in the house that's putting salt into the tank. It makes the concrete erode faster, degrade faster. So right now we just watch this. I'm gonna get the sewer camera out. We're gonna run it down the, the pipe and see what the inside of the pipe looks like. We're gonna look for high water marks, obviously plugs or occlusions, any, any breaks in the pipe and also try to locate where the absorption area is and locate where the wellhead is, make sure they're far enough apart. All right, so this is our sewer scope camera with a locator head. So as long as the absorption area isn't too far underground, this will send a radio frequency out and we can go locate it. Uh, but first thing we're gonna do is we send this in. As we're doing the load test, I'm gonna send this scope down and look through everything like to do it while the load test is going on or while water is running because sometimes this camera head can make a turn 
or come into a junction of pipes and you get uh, disoriented looking at the camera and you don't know if it turned around and you're now going backwards or upside down or whatever but if the water's flowing it always gives you a horizon and always orientates you to which direction you need to go also it's a good indication if there's problems if you see water's going this way and then curling up or coming back at you or building up uh, there's a lot of different visuals with it you'll see so start sending this down you also because we know with the water we know which way is bottom I also know if I'm turning left or right as I'm watching my camera yep so there you go we went through very typical uh, the first few feet out of the pipe because that ground has been disturbed and they put the pipes in and there's construction going on the first few feet coming out of that pipe and the tank settles and moves as it gets full of water that right there is always an issue spot with the outlet pipe because it's settled and moved since construction and it's typical to see that and then once you get six feet away from the tank it clears up and the rest of the ground wasn't disturbed and abused as bad and the tank isn't affecting that piece of pipe so that's really typical to see and as long as the effluent can continue to flow through there even though it's not 100 percent correct it can still function and do its job and it's something to monitor and down the road maybe repair the next time you have to do something and you have access to it um, but it's not necessarily an, an end-all be-all immediately when you see that coming right out of the tank also i can tell from the camera um, I can tell we got PVC pipe and I can tell that it's not perforated. So as soon as we see perforations, that's considered part of the absorption area and that's where I need to measure from to my wellhead. So first sign of perforation or holes in that pipe, that's absorption area. Even if it goes on to a, a cesspit or a D box or anything like that, if it's letting fluid out, that's where the absorption area starts. Uh, if this was cast iron, it would look very orange and be stalactites. It would look like a cave in there because the, the cast iron's oxidizing on the inside and catching debris. If it was Orangeburg, it would be black, have a texture to it. And Orangeburg pipe at this time is 60, 70 years old. It was only rated for 40 to 50 years. So you never find or Orangeburg in good condition. It's always usually completely in failure. In fact, even if you find it and it is working, it has, it's, it's not gonna last long. It could fail at any moment. All right, so we know we have a problem with the absorption area. Run the camera out as far as I can. I'm, I'm completely immersed underwater with the camera head, which shouldn't ever happen with the absorption area. Um, and it's not a dip in the pipe. This is, we're past that, we're in a different area. Um, I could tell that the, the pipe was damaged and um, looking pretty funky in there where I could see that I'm completely underwater and I've hit something that the camera head can't go past and um, can't get around and the camera head's only inch and a quarter around and that pipe is supposed to be four inch pipe so shouldn't be anything stopping it from going through and the waste levels are are high now consistently going through the absorption area so we, we at that point we stopped the load test there's no sense doing it anymore the level in the tank did not rise so without scoping with the pipe or uh, without scoping the pipes um, it may well have continued to just contain all that water and not manifest itself in the tank so that's why whenever possible we're going to do the, the camera and the load test together um, because if i'm not doing the load test and i just do the pipe with the camera that might not tell me what i need to know either so um so like I said, now we're gonna, we're gonna pull this out. I know I was pretty much in a straight line, so we're just gonna pull it out and lay it on the ground and that gives me a general location of where that obstruction is and we can try to pinpoint it from there or at least give the, the homeowner a general idea of where they need to start looking for repairs. It could be a crushed pipe, it could be a car drove over it, uh, a rock could have heaved up underneath it. There's a, a lot of things that could be causing just a uh, acute problem in one spot and then from there it could continue on and, and clear out but we don't know because uh, we can't get past this point.